Hey, it's Lindsay Baker with the Action Hour every Saturday at 10 o'clock. Do I have a surprise for you? Did you guys ever hear of the Wizard of Pause? I bet you have, and if you have it, you today. This, we have with us today the amazing Derek Campana, and we have Diana Munoz from Gentle Giants, and also Kobe Steiner from Gentle Giants. And the reason we're all here today is you are actually making a limb. You're going to be making a limb for one of the elephants. And I've seen the pictures of those poor babies at Gentle Giants. Derek, welcome to the show. Diana, Kobe, welcome back as always. We love having you on. How's everyone doing this morning? Great, hey. great. Good. <laughs> so Derek, I have to ask you first, right off the bat, how did you get into this business of making limbs from anything from a duck to an elephant? Um, so I started out in the human side of things. So I was building prosthetics for like wounded warriors and young guys coming back from, from the war and things like that. And then I had a veterinarian bring her black lab named Charles into my human facility. And um, this dog needed a prosthetic and no one, I'd never heard of animal prosthetics before. And I started Googling around and really no one in the world was doing it. So I realized that there was a need. Animals need prosthetics just like people. And I started a business in 2004 and I've made about 30, 35,000 uh, animal prosthetics since then. That is just amazing. And like you said, you've changed so many people's lives. Or like we said, I, I have a little sad story where it's very sad, not little sad. Um, about seven years ago, if I had known about you, I had a German shepherd, 135 pounds. The vet, we tried everything for the longest time to keep them going. And I guess what happens eventually is if they don't have the back, the use of their back legs, their whole system starts to break down. But anyway, we had to put him down. But if I had known about you, he probably could possibly still be here because he was in perfect yeah. health. Yeah, that. that's why I love doing things like this. It's uh, all about just getting the awareness out. We can help these animals where people don't realize and uh, extend their lives, save their lives, get them that quality of life that they need, just like we're doing with these um, gentle, gentle giants and these elephants, uh, Elephant Nature Park. It's really, really cool what we're going to be doing. Yeah, I want to just, before we jump into the Gentle Giants story, and we're going to go deeply into that, I want to just um, share one your website here for a moment, because I think I have it queued up to play a video of just seeing you in action. So let's see if I can get this going here. And switch you this to full screen. Here we go. Ah, not letting me play it. All right. Well, I'm just going to show this part. Yeah. This might give us an act. You can talk us through that if you like. Yeah. So this is just kind of going through like the different things we do at my bionic limb lab in Sterling, Virginia. So we build prosthetics for all different types of animals, small to large. Um, you know, we're doing ducks, birds, and then we're going as big as um, you know, these elephants I'll be working on in Thailand to so the African elephants like Jabu in South Africa and uh, everywhere in between. So it's just really cool what we can do to make animals walk again, sometimes for the first time in their lives and get them that their, their, their mobility that they need and allow them to be animals and, and pets and loved ones and family members that they are to us. So you know, this is just all about awareness, getting people to know what we can do. I've been doing this for 17 years, but still people don't really understand that there's prosthetics for animals out there and how affordable they really are. So it's just really getting that awareness out there. So I'm appreciate, appreciative of doing this on your show today. Yes, and that reminds me, we want to ask everyone to share out this video, have watch parties. Like I said, I had a personal tragedy. We see tragedies with animals. We're going to get into the story of the elephants in just a moment. But share this out, spread the word about this amazing man and what he can do to help save animals. So we do appreciate that, everyone. Diana and Kobe, we want to bring you into the conversation. So how did you guys, maybe one of you can start and the other one can jump in. How did you meet? Uh, Derek, how did and, and how did you come by the need for having Derek help you? Okay, so I guess I'll start. Um, Colby and I, when we saw, you know, Mamai is the elephant who made that courageous walk 
uh, to EMP. She's actually this beautiful uh, 29 year old elephant. And we saw how badly injured her leg was. Her um, knee is dislocated. This is, she just was walking and everyone continuously uh, kept asking us, what can we do to help her? How can you help our, her knee, her leg and everything? And it dawned on Colby and she said, hey, you know what? I've seen what Derek Campana does and he worked on Jabu. Uh, Derek and Colby were friends on Facebook. So we contacted him and uh, here we are. You know, he's going to be helping Mamai and, and also uh, baby Kunde and Mr. Cow and uh, Tycoon. Mr. Yeah, Cow, we, well, I want to show the video of the, of the poor cow. <laughs> You know, when I first saw that, I thought it might have been something like in the dog meat trade where they have actually, they actually amputate the limbs and use them to make soup. And uh, I know that, do you know, Derek, do, have you worked with any of those people? I know that some people were doing animal help and wellness was doing some limbs and different people. Go ahead. Yeah, I've worked with a lot of them. Uh, Mark Ching actually came to my office uh, a few years ago. I worked on one of his personal dogs that he saved over over there but yeah that's just the worst um, conditions worst things i've seen uh humans do to animals um and luckily some of them get rescued and i'm here to help them uh try and regain mo mobility after these awful amputations but yeah i hear those horror stories and um i hear them every day that's just part of my line of work all these emails that are coming through the abuse the neglect um all the tragedies that are happening um to these animals and um you know, people like the, like us here today are, are here to help them and uh, try to get them the help that they need. That's amazing. And uh, so let's talk a little bit about the cow. And um, she was born that way, from what I understand. Is that correct? Yes. And yes, uh, it, he, it, it's actually a he. He was born this way. And um, his mother was taken to the slaughterhouse, but the farmer who had the mother and when he saw that the baby was doing everything possible to move. For some reason, he just uh, was very touched and he uh, sought out Lek and he took Mr. Cow uh, to Lek Sanctuary to Elephant Nature Park and said, look, this baby has done everything possible to live. You try to give him a good life. So the baby cow is actually, he's one year old. So he's very young, but he's never been able to walk up straight because he doesn't have any limbs. Oh, wow. So that would cause back problems, right? Is that correct, Derek? All sorts of things uh, like yeah. that. More, more than that. I mean, he probably wouldn't be able to get around much longer. He's going to get bigger. He's going to weigh more. And uh, it's not a life any cow should lead. You know, he's young now. He's not in arthritic pain or in a lot of pain. So he's getting around. He's moving. But that won't last long. So, you know, we're here to save Mr. Cow's life and get him upright for the first time in his life, which is really exciting. I'm so excited to just work on all these animals over there. But uh, Mr. Cow, it's gonna be a huge transformation. I can't wait to see this transformation. He's gonna be up moving and uh, I have very high hopes for Mr. Cow. And I imagine there's, you know, because of all of the work that you have to do, there are costs involved. So Diana, how are you, you guys, or Kobe can address this one. How are you guys coming up with the funding to be able to you know, take care of these animals and now to have to do this as well. Do you want to talk about that? Well, we had a campaign, the Bionic Giant campaign, and our beautiful gentle giant family who never lets us down came together and we raised the funds for them. Um, gentle Giants decided to donate Kundej's leg. Kundej is a snare trap victim um we gentle giants is donating his leg the other ones I, people people reached out and you know it was incredible because it's all these you know people who don't have much tend to give so much for these animals and it's it's been just beautiful that you know we were able to raise enough money to 
to do this for them all. And, you know, we, we joke with Derek because we're like, well, we could keep you in Thailand probably for the next 30 years. <laughs> because yeah. there truly are so many animals there that need help. And, you know, um, we started out just talking about Mai Mai. And then we started talking about who else. And, you know, Kundej came up and then uh, Tycoon, uh, Mr. Cow. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be beautiful to see. Uh, Mr. Cow is, is, has my heart because, you know, he lives in a very small enclosure. He doesn't get to be with a herd. He, he, you know, secluded. So to be able to see him upright moving and being able to be with the rest of the cows is, is going to be amazing. It's going to be amazing to see all of them, you know, may my me um all of them be able to walk better yeah and we have a question from our one of our, our viewers what happened to the elephant now of course he's referring to the elephant with the knee i believe this one okay so uh we're talking about mamai mamai uh was taken to logging and apparently she had now this is the story because it has changed throughout time but the initial story was that she had been taken to logging and she had an accident where after that accident she had been taken to the hospital she stayed there for six months and her owner had to say her owner at the time because now ma'am i thankfully is uh, and will forever stay at elephant nature park um the owner at that time noticed that he couldn't take her back to logging so he said what else can i do to exploit her and he went into horse breeding um Apparently the bull did not like Mamai and he went on the attack and he turned her over and she had to withstand this attack on her back, uh, completely tackled and he dislocated her knee and he really, you know, almost killed her. So they rape them, you know, I, I think I have said this many times on your show before, they put knives to their bellies, they hold their ears, uh, they shackle them from all fours and they hold her and they bring the bull also shackled. He's been probably beaten and he's in musk, so he's very aggressive. And if he, if he doesn't like the female, he'll just go on the attack, which is what happened to Mamai. And Mamai, people who, know, who uh, follow Elephant Nature Park will remember that this is very similar case to Dala. Uh, so, you know, she is in really, really uh, a lot of pain. And this is why when everyone was asking us and sending us messages, what can you do to help her? Of course, at Elephant Nature Park, they're giving her the most beautiful life. But we were always thinking and always planning, what else can we do for her? And thankfully, well, Derek came into the picture and he's going to, you know, give his magic to us, you know, he's creating Yeah, magic. and we have a little video of his magic right here, I think. Let me just play, it's super quick. <laughs> <laughs> he's a fast worker. Yeah, right. he's fast <laughs> yeah. He's got a lot of elephants if too. Only. He is. <laughs> if only, if only. <laughs> That was so cute. So, Derek, tell us a little bit about what, how this whole process works, how it, you know, dealing with working with an elephant or any animal, really. Tell us a little bit about how it all works, if you would. Um, for one, it's quite an honor working with elephants. They're my favorite type of animal in the world. They're just, they're just the coolest dinosaurs that are still living on this earth. So I love being able to work on elephants. Not many people in their lives can say they've made a prosthetic device um, for an elephant. So I'm lucky to be doing this for Elephant Nature Park and the Gentle Giant State Home Project. Um, and I've been lucky enough to work with elephants before. So, you know, I've, I've had quite a deal of, of work um, in South Africa and Thailand in the past. So it's giving me more confidence with these guys. These are very difficult cases. No one's ever made a knee brace for um, an elephant. No one's ever made an elbow brace for an elephant. So these are big, challenging uh, feats that we're going to be going against. And you can see just with that mold how big it is in my office and what I have to go through. And we're moving hundreds of pounds of these molds. And there's, there's other ways to do this, but I'm using my traditional methods and sculpting these out by hand. And I'm going through the whole process just step by step myself so I make sure everything's um, at the best quality and 
and, and trying to assure um, everybody and myself included that this is going to fit and work well for these elephants. But it's not easy, you know. And you know, we're working uh, working with people. You know, it's we're we're kind of doing the same things over and over again. We kind of look the same. We walk the same. We have some the same anatomy, but with animals. You know, yeah. one day I'll be working on a crane's leg or an eagle's leg. And then the next day I'm working on these elephants. So we're constantly having to rearrange my my train of thought and how to help every single animal out. There's only a few of us in the world that do this. And um, there's so many animals in need. And, um, you know, like these guys said, uh, I could stay in Thailand for, for months and years. I'm sure there's so many animals in need out there. They're everywhere. Everywhere I go, I'm um, I'm in need, and and the few of us out there in the world are in need to help these guys. And that's the that's the hardest part right now. Is even though I've been doing this for about 17 years, the field in its entirety is still in its infancy, and we need more of us out there to help these animals and training and curriculums. And um, yeah, I want to really bring everything that I learned on the human side and bring it over to the animals and keep this at a cost affordable to anybody, um, either be it through uh, just keeping these costs low or through donations like we did here with the with these elephants. But um, that's really my goal is just to really kickstart this, um, this industry as a whole to anybody out there with these curriculums, keep keeping these prices low and helping as many animals as we can. That's so wonderful. So you're saying what you're I'm hearing you say that you actually want to encourage other people that do your kind of work to engage in this work and join you in doing it. And that would help to keep the cost lower as well, I would imagine. What can, can you go ahead? Go ahead. You yeah, there's go. no curriculum. That's the problem, is no one can really get into this industry, you know. You really have to go through the human side of prosthetics, which is great, but there's no direct veterinary prosthetic curriculum. So I'm going to pretty much start developing uh, an accreditation body. I'll be developing, you know, training videos, things like that. So people can really start to dive in because it's just there's such a huge need right now. You know, uh, Lindsay, if I, if I could say something, and this is sure. what makes Derek so absolutely amazing, and is that just like you had that tragic story, personal tragic story, where you lost your furry kid because of something that maybe Derek could have uh, helped you with, this is the story for everyone. I mean, you know, many of, even now people are telling us, why don't you euthanize uh, Mamai? Or people see baby Kuta's foot, which is blown up by us. You know, he, I'm sorry, it wasn't blown up. It was actually cut off by a snare. Uh, you know, people think that their life is like, no, it's not worth living because they're in pain. And just like I tell people, you know, no matter our own disability, we would never wish upon our disabled uh, relative to just pass away because they can't walk. So I think this is what's so amazing about what Derek does is that he gives these beautiful beings the possibility of living such a better life of in, in many cases pain free and for people to understand that these lives are worth giving for we did get some grievance at the beginning of our campaign people saying oh you know uh why are you raising for this if maybe it's not going to work but we have to give it a try you know we have and maybe it won't work we can, there are no promises we i think derek is going to do his best just like we all do but you know we have to give it a try and i think that's what's so amazing about this is that people will be able to see that they you know we all get uh a chance of a better life and, and I, derek did that uh, you know, and, and I, it's true, it's just a mindset change that has to happen because when, literally when I was taking a shower this morning, I was saying to myself, how could I have put my dog down? And there was that option out there, but you know, I can't beat myself up about that. It's just you automatically, after a certain point, you go there. Like Derek said, the information is just not out there. So Derek, how can our viewers help get this word out so people that are going to be watching this this live streams over multiple platforms so we want to get the word out what can people do to help get get more of the, the these professionals want for one thing to go into this field and second how can they get the word out to people 
Um, that's what's really great about my TV show. You know, it's just starting to really get out there. Um, we just, we, I've been on B, BYU TV for the last two years, and we're just starting to get on Nat Geo Wild. So I'm working my hardest to get uh, the word out. This is hitting millions and millions of viewers. And every time something this big gets out there, and there's never been a show about animal prosthetics before, so my hope is that the, the show in itself is going to be the the main um, path to get people interested in this industry. And then from there, I'll be working on getting some of these uh, curriculum started, um, these little classes started. So hopefully, um, you know, we can get the people we need to help all these animals that are in need. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's very challenging. It doesn't happen overnight. Like I said, I've been doing this for 17 years with animals and it's just starting to get, to get traction. I think the biggest misconceptions are, um, you know, People think it costs uh, so much um, for these prosthetics, but we, we do keep them very, very low. I think the average price for most of our braces is about $750 and about $1,000 for a prosthesis. So you're getting a leg for your pet, you know, for about $1,000. You enter any veterinary clinic and uh, you, you, you get charged a few hundred dollars just for going in. So, um, you know, and, and these, these type of devices can enable your pet your family member to live you know at least a couple of years longer on an injury or or live a life that they wouldn't before so that's one huge misconception our costs you know when it comes to elephants it costs a little bit more we're, we're building a huge leg um and it takes a lot of time and like i said there's so few of us out there that you know we have to delineate our time and, and do what we can to help the most animals in need but um still you think uh, I think our elephants' uh, legs cost around, you know, 10k about each. But there's so much that goes involved, and any yeah. the human prosthesis costs 60,000, 100,000. So relatively speaking, we're giving these elephants, uh, these legs, their lives back for a really low price, in my opinion. Might some people might balk at it, but honestly, that is uh, a life changer for a very, very little price. I have another question to ask you. Um, if someone has a dog or, you know, a, well, be probably a dog that has some sort of joint problems, would those braces be something? Now, we uh, we have a dog that they said eventually will need hip replacement. In fact, their whole joint, ball joint, will have to be replaced. So would yeah. before that, could people like that have a situation with a dog like mine go to you now? Would that help the dog? not maybe have to have the surgery possibly or i mean um, hips are hips are a little different i work with extremities more so so i like to use the example of a, an acl brace a knee brace so you tear your acl and you have a surgery it's common practice now to go to physical therapy to do rehab to wear a post-op knee brace um that just developed in the human side about 30 years ago and now it's just starting to happen with animals where uh, you have a knee surgery, you can wear a post-op knee brace, or instead of surgery, you can wear a knee brace and it can heal over time. Um, and this can actually save you thousands of dollars. So it's one of those situations where joints, extremities, any type of brace that we use for people, I'm trying to develop and build for animals. And um, that's just the way it should be. These are our family members. They are part of our family. They're loved so much. And um, why not give them that hope? Why not give them that ability to walk again and give them all the tools they they need to do so. Absolutely, absolutely, ja Diana. I'm Diana. I'm going to let you jump in in a moment, but I just want to say one more thing to Derek. Stay tuned at the end because I know someone that might be able might need your help. They have a dog that just tore their ACL, so <laughs> you've got more customers now. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Go ahead, Diana or Kobe. Do you want to jump in? I know you haven't said anything for a while. Did you want to jump in? Oh, I'm sorry. You're somehow you're blocked here. Let's get you back on there. Um, you know, one thing I wanted to go back track on these yeah, the landmine victims. So along the border of Thailand and Myanmar, there are so many landmines and there are so many humans who step on these landmines. But the number of elephants is incredible. Um, it's something like three times what humans um, are being injured by these landmines. So it, it's a real issue, especially because many of these elephants 
during the COVID crisis are being sold back into logging and they're crossing the border into Myanmar. And so they're working along that border where all the landmines are. So, you know, one thing Gentle Giants is trying really hard to do um, is to prevent anybody from selling their elephants into any industry, but also the logging industry. We've saved 38. We have people coming to us daily. Um, there are so many hundreds, hundreds of elephants suffering. Um, and it all comes down to funding. You know, Diana and I, we work really hard and we love our gentle giant family and um, they're very supportive. But, you know, in order to save more elephants and prevent them from crossing that border and getting back into logging or once the borders open and tourism opens up, you know, we have to save as many as we can now. Um, we actually have just started a project in Surin. Um, it's called Gentle Giant Providence. Um, the guys over there are working really hard to build the fencing and the shelter and everything. It, it, it's looking beautiful. And, and it's for two elephants that are at EMP whose owner wanted to take them back to Surin. Um, Molly Wan and Mike Hoy. Molly Wan is pregnant. But what we're eventually hoping is we can house approximately 20 elephants. So we're hoping that we can take even more elephants um, there um, and, you know, protect them. So I'm on your website and I thought I'd let you talk a little bit, um, let me accept, uh, about what people, what folks can come to your website and learn more about what you guys do. And maybe you can give a little background, you or Diana, about that while I show your website. Go ahead, Diana. Is she blocked? I'm sorry, wait. You're I, muted. I, you're muted. I have to unmute her. Yeah, because they're static. Go ahead. You're free. All right. So, you know, uh, it was just our first year anniversary on June 14th. And when we uh, launched Dental Giants on June 14th of last year, we really thought that we were going to just be helping about 10 or 20 elephants if we were lucky. Uh, now we have 114 and hopefully we'll be able to get another uh, four that they told us uh, yesterday were in terrible, terrible condition. We're working on that. So by the way, people of the circle of giving, you know, we're looking for a grant. If you could please vote for us, please vote for us. This really depends if we can bring in those other four. So, okay, you know, well, they, Diana, tell people what that is, because a lot of people don't the, know. The circle, the circle of giving right now, we have it on our website. You just have to vote for us. If you want, you can donate, but you don't have to donate. You would just have to vote for uh, the dentalgiants.org only for this weekend. They have 5,500 that if we are able to uh, get to the number one place we can get. But Colby might know a little bit more than I do, actually. Okay, I'd like to know where we go on your website to do that. Uh, yeah, Colby is muted. Colby is muted. Okay, hang on a second here. <laughs> okay, so it's not actually on our website, but someone will throw it up in the comments here. It's also on our Facebook page. It's through my giving circle. And okay. this weekend, for every new vote, it's very easy. You just click, click put Gentle Giants as the charity you want. Uh, for every new vote, they're paying a dollar. Then through, um, that's through tomorrow, then through June 30th, they have $90,000 worth of grants they're going to be giving to charities. So we've moved from the 101 spot up to 39. 39. And it's very That's easy. All you, again, all you have to do is click and vote, and it doesn't cost you a thing. And and if you share um, and get your friends and family, because that those grants would really really help us. Okay, I see Carlos. Thank you, Carlos. Just put the link up. Um, again, it's on our Facebook page. It's on all our social media except our website. Um, but the voting goes through June thirtieth. You can vote every day. I think you can vote several times a day. I just keep voting. <laughs> I try. That's you can't. Or is that through the Melinda Gates Foundation where she's doing all those? Or is this something else? Because that's another person. Something else. 
Yeah, you should check that out. I just threw him away. Animals on Twitter. Animals. I know. I've never even heard of it. And oh, the, yeah. the good thing yeah. about the good thing about getting these grants is that, of course, we'll be able to bring in more home. We'll be able to also look into having uh, Derek do more of uh, these uh, prostheses and braces for us because we have a lot of disabled uh, elephants and we really need to give them a better life. You know, it's not only about bringing them home, but it's also about protecting and healing them and seeing right. them thrive. And what Derek does is that, you know, when he gives, we're just, I'm over the moon thinking about baby Kunde. Baby Kunde is a, a snare victim. Uh, he was caught in a snare when he was just one year old and he was born wild and his um, family had to leave him. The herd had to leave him behind because he was caught in the snare. And baby Kunde was so desperate that he pulled and pulled and he literally ripped his foot off. So this is when he was just about one year old and he has lived without a foot. They bandage it, you know, they can't uh, let him gain weight. He's not as big as he would want to be or as a bull should be. But baby Kunde hey, wants- Is this the picture here? I just want to show- Exactly, her. yes. This yeah. is baby Kunde. And you know, I'm over the moon when I met him. Uh, he's the sweetest, sweetest, sweetest boy. By the way, uh, Derek, you said that, you know, uh, if, if, if you get to go, um, will you be able to fit him? And I, I spoke to Lex and Lex said, oh yes, absolutely. He's, a, he's <laughs> uh, incredible if that were to happen. But, uh, but you know, I'm very excited for Baby Kunde because Baby Kunde has never walked on all fours as he used to since he was one. So for the first time, we might get to see Baby Kunde that now uh, is very, uh, you know, is going around flirting with the girls, uh, being able to chase them <laughs> with, you know, running because he's now limping uh, trying to catch some girls but you know now he might be running well of course you know the, it, it, at elephant nature park there's no breeding there's nothing but he likes to go around trying to flirt with girls and that's okay that's so great. i'm very excited for him i'm very very excited for him Derek, want to tell the folks when your show is on again, and we want to remind everyone, if you're just tuning in, we have the Wizard of Paws with us, as well as Gentle Giants Nonprofit. Derek is known as the Wizard of Paws because he makes prosthetics for any, any animal, from a duck to an elephant, to your dog, to your cat. Did you ever make one for a squirrel or any tiny little <laughs> mouse? Or um. Yeah, I, uh, I made one for a guinea pig the other day named Boots. I made a really, really? cool part. You can see it on our Instagram page, which is at Bionic Pets. But um, the show is on. It's streaming right now. You can stream it through the BYU TV app. Um, or today, it's on all day. I think it's like literally all day on a Nat Geo Wild. So if you just go on a Nat Geo Wild or talking to your remote, say the Wizard of Paws, you're going to see it pop up. And um it's a great show. Again, it's uh, creating awareness of this industry, this field, and in turn, that's going to help so many pets in need in the future. Wow. So if I go up to my Alexa and say, uh, I want to watch a Wizard of Paws, she'll put it on? I believe so. I've done it into my Nat Geo. Remote and uh, should do it. Yeah. Yay. So everyone, Nat Geo today, go watch it. You have all day, but go watch it now so you don't forget and then share it with your friends and tell everybody. And please donate to Gentle Giants because they are doing amazing work. You want to check out their website. It's right here, thegentlegiants.org. So it's a little different than the name because the name is Gentle Giants Nonprofit. So don't get mixed up with that. But if you Google Gentle Giants Nonprofit, it comes right up. So exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Look for the logo. Let's show the logo too. So Lindsay, yeah, Diana, quickly finish saying how we got started. Sure. Just oh, just, just so yeah. people understand. Yeah. Go ahead. So I was, I, you know, we started because of COVID and um, everyone or many people know that we launched Gentle Giants just to be able to help the elephants that were walking back home. Uh, we thought that we would help about 10 or 20 probably. And it just started growing and growing. And this is all thanks to our beautiful uh, Gentle Giants family. Nothing, none of this uh, is possible with everyone that is out there 
there is one right now that she's um, making comments. Tina Reed has 25 in her herd. She has sponsored 25 beautiful uh, dental giants. And you know, we are very happy because we're able to show every day, we post three, four uh, posts a day, showing people where their money goes. So if we, when we launched our um, enrichment program, because like I said, it's not about just taking them home. It's also about making their lives happy, make, seeing them thrive, helping them to find their elephant soul again. And this is something that we're able to do because of people uh, supporting us. So we have bought tires for them. We have made, you know, for the babies, big, big uh, tubs where they can um, swim, where they can start developing mentally, physically, they're happy. And this is uh, something that has been going on uh, from the very beginning. We just grew and we have been growing very, very fast, but it's all to, thanks to our Dental Giants family. And we can, and now with Derek, you know, having this opportunity to also expand it to not only making them happy and seeing them thrive, but now also helping them heal physically is really, really a very important part of our, of our organization. We want it to be a whole, you know, for a whole circle, a full circle where we actually rescue, heal and protect and not only just feed them. You know, it's many people will say, okay, just bring them in and feed them. But there are so much more than that. There are these brilliant, uh, intelligent, sentient beings that deserve the best. And, you know, uh, a leg costs about ten thousand, uh, or brace or prosthesis about ten thousand dollars, give or take. But even if it were more than that, they are so worth it. And just like any life, any if it were our parents, our child, we would be willing to pay a lot more. You know, yes. we should be willing to pay a lot more if that were the case. Uh, for these beautiful beings, absolutely. And we have a comment here from Joanna, and she's saying vote, vote, vote. So that's what you can do right now, folks. I want to urge you right now to go ahead and vote. The link is there, and you can go and click on it. And if this is going to help, like Diana said, the costs are staggering. Kobe, what is the average cost to, like, for, for yearly for each elephant? You may have said it, but I was, I didn't, it may have hit, gone by me. So just for food and the caretaker, it is eight hundred dollars a month per elephant. So that's just for food and the mahout. Then you have, of course, with you know you you have medical costs. We have several um, elephants. Um, our begging elephants, you know, they some have gotten worms. We've had to send the vets out to give medication for the worms because the elephants are feeling and looking awful. Um, you know, we, we make sure, you know, we follow up with all of our elephants. So people uh, all the time are like, you know, I don't know if they really know what goes on behind the scenes, but 114 elephants, 23 of which we don't even have up for sponsorship or have asked for money for. Um, every day, Diana and I review hundreds of videos and photos for each elephant to make sure that they are healthy and happy and thriving. If we see anything wrong, a foot problem, um, they're looking skinny, you know, we make sure that a vet goes out and checks them. There's that cost. Um, you know, to, to for land, like the CERN project, there's that cost for land. And then the building of all the structures, you know, to house the elephants so they're chain free and safe. You know, many people think, oh, once you've got the elephants in and you've saved them or you've rescued them or they're back in the forest, it's dead and done. You have to remember it's long-term care. You have this enormous 2,000 pound animal that requires a lot of upkeep because they don't know how to take care of themselves in the wild. You cannot just release them back into the wild. You right. know, they have to have supplemental food. Um, they have to, again, vet checks. Um, Diana can add more to, you know, the mahouts. We pay our mahouts very fair wages because we don't want them to you know, they've been exploited too. 
that's something we've talked about before. These young kids who are leased out to these trekking camps, um, you know, they, they don't have a say. They go and they're treated very badly and paid horribly. Um, so we like that they're back home with their families and we can provide them, um, you know, a better opportunity for them and their family. Diana, you want to? Yeah, we want yeah. to let Claire come back in too in a little bit too. But go ahead, Jan Diana, wrap it up on this point. Go ahead. No, I, I think that the most important thing is for people to realize that once a rescue occurs, this is not the end, but just the beginning. I think that people have to realize that the rescue is, uh, we can compare it to when you're pregnant. And once you rescue the, the elephant, then the rest of its life you have to take care of. And that, that is absolutely what people have to have to realize. It doesn't end, it just begins. Many people are constantly telling us, can you help, can you help, can you help? But you have to really think and consider that we have to really take under consideration many factors. And that is long-term care. And also that we can't give a lot of money to, uh, we have to also study uh, who we're going to give the money to because we don't want it to be a, a, you know, a vicious circle where we go and pay for an elephant and they go buy two or a baby or something like that. So everything has to be well planned out. Uh, and sometimes people are not patient enough to understand this. They just want us to go. But I think that is very important. And I think that's the greatest example. Uh, pregnancy is while the rescue and the rest of the life is, uh, you know, once the baby arrives, you have to plan for the for the present, for the future, once we rescue them. That's how it is. That's a good metaphor that you're using. And I think a lot of people don't think about that. And even perhaps some celebrities that have stepped in, I'm not, I'm thankful that they have, but many times they do step in but then the support, I've heard stories, many cases where later is uh, some organizations don't, they don't follow through. And that can, you know, people, like you said, people need to realize that this is not just a one-time thing, but it's ongoing and it's, you constantly have to be raising funding for this. Exactly. Sometimes we feel we may be asking, we ask for money every day, uh, meaning that we're saying, you know, we need, we have 114 kids and we have to feed 114 kids that each are four and six tons. <laughs> and, you know, and they need housing and they need care and they need, they, they need space and they need many, many things. Uh, and, you know, it's just like, for me, it's just like raising a child. You have to give them the best you can. If you're going to bring them into your life, you have to be the best parent that you possibly can. And for Colby and I, we are, they are our 114 kids. And, and Lindsay, now, I can tie this it. back to Garrett. So Pundej is still little because he hasn't been able to develop to his, you know, normal size because of his leg. So Derek is going to have to, as Pundej grows, Derek's going to have to adjust his brace or create a new one. Again, it's long-term care. So, you yeah. know, we, we will, we're not letting Derek go anywhere. <laughs> Derek, <laughs> you now now recorded, Derek, and you, you're trapped. You're trapped yeah. here <laughs> with proof. We're here. Yeah. Yeah. But, it uh, is, I mean, it's, it, it is a lifelong, it's a lifelong commitment, you know, with these animals, every animal, elephants, guinea pigs, whatever it be, you know, and people don't realize that with, with human prosthetics, you don't just get a prosthesis and you're done. There's constant care. Um, there's upgrades, uh, new prosthetics that need to be made. And it's the same here, especially with elephants that are two tons, um, or African elephants that are five or six tons, you know, I mean, wear and tear things that happen. Um, you know, I'll be putting, we'll be putting these first devices on these elephants. That's great, but it's going to keep continuing. Costs are going to still, um, happen and money's still going to be needed to continue this care. Elephants don't just live to 20 years old. They live a lot longer. I mean, they're, they have very long lifespans and, they want to walk. They want to get around. They want to be the elephants that they want to be. Animals want to be animals. And um, you give them a leg and they can walk. You don't want to ever take that away. You want to keep them walking. You want to keep them going. You want them to be active. So it's very, very important to, um, to keep them ha happy and healthy.
Well, it sounds like the, what you're planning, this program, this training program is going to be very valuable to all of us. So what kind of help do you need with that? I mean, what's your dream list, wish list going forward to take this plan to get this out into the world? Um, I just started a nonprofit, uh, 501c3, called The Bionic Barn. And we're going to be raising money for a lot of animals in need that can't afford mobility devices. But it's also portions of it are going to go towards education, um, other nonprofits like the Gentle Giant Stay Home Project, things like that. Um, so that's going to be opening up uh, here very soon. And we're going to get uh, a few acres of land. We're going to build the Bionic Barn. Um, we're going to house Bionic Pets in the nonprofit and start gaining uh, access or sorry, start making these programs for education, make these, make this training facility, make this rehab facility, um, have it be a destination where people can bring their animals. We can treat them right on site and um, have them stay there. And uh, just a whole bunch of things. It's been a dream of mine. That's going to really help progress this, um, this whole veterinary prosthetics industry into the next level. So I'm just really excited to do it. Yeah, we want to let people know they can help you do it by supporting your show, watching this show, telling others, spreading the word about it, because really it is something that everyone needs to know about if you have pets. And of course, if you love and support wildlife and animals in general. So yeah, so please folks, that's a little bit of activism you can do today. On the Action Hour, we try to give people actionable things. And of course, this other opportunity here to, without even donating, to supply Gentle Giants with funding through your support. This is another great cause. So I want to, we're just kind of time to wrap up now. Believe it or not, we've gone through almost an hour. And I want to give you each a few minutes to just wrap up. So why don't we start with Ruby, Diana, and then we'll end on Derek. Go ahead. Well, I'll start and I just want to say thank you, Derek, for walking this uh, journey with us. I mean, really working with you. We are over the moon, very happy that you're going to be giving, um, you know, our gentle ones and Mr. Cow the possibility of a new life. I, you know, we're Lech and Colby and I, we're just so thrilled to be working with you. And I know that Mamai and all of them are going to benefit in such a beautiful way. So thank you. Thank you so, so much. And thank you to all of our family members from the Gentle Giants family. Without you, we would not be able to do what we're doing. Thank you for supporting us. And you know that if you really support us, your donations go to where we promise they they go. And I think that thankfully uh, in this first year, we have been able to uh, set the stage that you can trust that all your donations go to where your heart uh, intent, intends them to go. Fantastic. Oops. Thank you. Diana always steals what I'm going to say. <laughs> so I want to thank Derek. Um, we really enjoyed being able to travel to Virginia a couple weekends ago and see how everything is done. Um, we had a lot of fun and it was great to see the process. So thanks, Derek, for um, you know showing us around and everything. Quickly, I want to do a shout out. Um, this gorgeous new doubt. Oh, wow. Um, the Wonder Grannies, um, we have Doodow, Maybai, um, whew, I just left me, Taru, and Mai Tai. They're all rescued older ladies, and a beautiful supporter of ours designed these gorgeous t-shirts for men and women. You can go to our Facebook page, and um, you'll see where you can order them if you would like. Fantastic. Those are gorgeous. They yes. are very beautiful in person. Beautiful. Can't wait to get one. And yeah. thank you, Lindsay, for having us all on again. Oh, yes. you're welcome. In fact, I was just thinking I'd love to have you all on again when we see the finished uh, limb for our friends and Mr. Cow. I love that name, by the way. Mr. Cow. Oh, yeah. th thank you, guys. Thank you guys for having me on, too. Um, this is a really important cause and these elephants need um, their lives back. So please everyone donate to Gentle Giants. Uh, go check out the website, check out Wizard of Paws. That just helps you realize our process and what we're doing. 
Um, the show just creates awareness to help so many animals in need, and um, that can further get the funding for these elephants. And uh, this is a great team we have here. I'm really happy to be working with you guys. We're going to get these elephants up, moving around. We're going to show the world what we can do for these elephants, and um, that's going to be a big deal. It's going to really get the funding that all these 114 kids need and um, in and future elephants to come. So it's uh, a huge deal. Follow these guys. Um, you're going to see the awesome work that they're doing. And uh, I'm here just to, to give those tools um, to assist them, really. That is so kind of you, Derek, and so wonderful that you're doing this work. And I know it's going to make a huge difference for animals, as all of you, what you're doing is going is doing. So that's amazing. So we just want to remember, remind folks one more time, please share out this video. Go vote. Uh, the links will be, any links that we discuss will definitely be in the comments. I go right after the show and add them. So uh, you'll find them there. And uh, yeah, we're going to wrap up for this week. So thank you for watching, everyone. Thank you to all of my guests for being on. Folks, stay on after we end the broadcast for a moment. Bye, everyone. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.